so, Martin, uh, can you just tell me a bit about the film? Well, the film, um, really, originally, it was uh, Leo came to me with the idea, Leo and Dougie, so maybe you should ask okay. Leo. Okay. So, yeah. Because you produced um, the film, is that right? Pardon? So you co-produced the yeah, film, exactly, is that right? Yeah, exactly, exactly right. Um, so, yeah, so Dougie and I have known each other a long time. We shot a film, Green Street, together a while ago. Um, we'd always kept in contact. And, uh, yeah, we met for a pint in Soho one day. And he was telling me about um, a book that he had that he was thinking of possibly developing into a film. Um, I then said I knew exactly the person yeah. for this book and this film. So um, we sat down with Jonathan Sothcott, who then put us in touch with Martin. He was in LA at the time. We had a few little Skype chats, um, and luckily for us, Martin came on board. Then uh, numerous sort of script edits later, there we were on the set doing uh, crazy six day weeks and making right. the film, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, okay, so the film is essentially kind of about that kind of football hooligan. Well no, I wouldn't say it's it. essentially about football hooligans, I'd, I'd say, to be honest with you, I'd say it's a crime drama. Yeah. Uh, it's a drama, it's kitchen sink drama, it's, it's got a football element, football hooligan element in there and, uh, but you have to understand as well these days, when I first walked on the set and we spoke about the, the, the uh, script, uh, the, the football hooligan thing yeah. really doesn't exist within soccer as big as it no, used no, to be. Course. And I think we had to make that. You know, you can't make out that it's still there. It's still how it was. Uh, well, it's still like yeah. it was, you know, when the guys made the, the first Green Street. Yeah. You know. Well, even then was, you know, was, was the sort of tail end. I mean... It, it, it does still happen, but yeah. it's very few yeah. and far between. I mean, yeah. police presence, CCTV, and hopefully more of an education, you know, yeah. that, that's not necessarily And I think it's the do. way the stadiums are built as well. Oh, they're totally. not as enclosed, you know, they're much more open bowls. If you look at the Emirates, you know, it's like open, and you go there to watch the game rather than to get involved yeah, in yeah. some kind of punch up, you know. So and also, you know, football's too expensive nowadays. Yeah. For for guys just to yeah. go there to have a fight. You, yeah. you spend your money, you wanna you go there for the reason yeah, yeah, the game, of you know. But there's still that kind of gang element. Yeah. Whether so it be well, about football. Well, what or we did in uh, in Top Dog, Top Top Dog's about kind of really for me Top Dog is about uh, the dangers of being Top Dog. Whether it's in a football gang, whether it's in a, a local uh, gangster firm or, where, or wherever you are, you know, if you put your head above the parapet, then expect to get it knocked off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and why do you think that people are constantly, you know, drawn to these sort of characters, these sort of bad boys, as it were? I don't know, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a British pastime, isn't it? The mm. sort of uh, the hooligan element and the gangster thing. I don't know. I think you know it's. You know, rightly or wrongly, it's, it, it was around for so long. I mean, the tribal element of, of, of the football supporters will always be there. You know, your, yeah. your dad, your granddad, you know, it's literally in your blood. Um, so then with anything tribal, I guess um, that can sometimes manifest in, in uh, sort of violence, I guess. So, um, you know, sorry, I've, I've lost your question. What was your question? Uh, and why do you think audience oh, so, well, then, that well, enjoy yeah, well, that kind of thing? Well, given that then, you know, about the, the tribal element, I mean, everyone has, everyone has something that they hold dear to them, don't they? So, I mean, you know, everyone can relate on that level. And then, you know, lads, you know, I guess lads are drawn to yeah. lads punching yeah. lads, you know, which is why it came about and yeah. why people will still always go and see yeah. these kind of films, you know? You know, I think it's also... Uh, I think it's because everyone, everyone has a dark side. Yeah. Everyone has a box in them called violence or whatever. And, and, but everybody chooses to keep it locked up. I think on a screen, actors get the chance to open it up, get all their toys out and then, and then close it again. And yeah. so in a way it's kind of like, it's some kind of cheap therapy, you know, but not everyone gets the chance to do that. Yeah. But, but they like to watch it. Yeah, absolutely. And so yeah. it's kind of, uh, I think that's why people are drawn towards uh, uh, the bad guy in a film. Fantastic. Yeah. And actually, um, we're talking about bad guys, uh, two women in the film. Actually, if you compare it to other films that have a sort of similar theme, this film in particular had much sort of stronger and more prominent female characters than a lot of films of the similar genre do. Was that intentional? Yeah, we tried very hard to do that. You know, I, I, when we first spoke about a 
the film when Leo first came to me with the script, uh, and I said, I, I'm absolutely into it, I, I, into it, but I didn't want to make a film that was just about uh, kick and tell, just mm. about um, a revenge. He hits him, so he hits him back. But we've got to show the depth of uh, and the chaos that it causes within the home, mm. uh, and that's what we tried to do. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was one of the major drawing points. Uh, you know, for me and, and for Martin as well, I think, you know, because as you say, we there's many sort of films like this, but they don't always touch on what happens when he walks in through the door, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you live a, a duplicitous life, they've got, a, they've got a clash at some point. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the really interesting thing, I think, to me. And I, and I think out of that, what you get, right, if you concentrate on that as well, what you get is a... a is a, is a movie that is a performance movie as well, where the performances are the engine of the film and it takes you towards what you're, the end section, uh, where a lot of these films, the performances kind of get left behind and it becomes all about the way the, uh, you shoot the violence and you, yeah. it becomes like MTV, kind of slow it down, speed it up, slow it down, crank the film, uh, and it becomes like MTV violence. Where, and for me, MTV violence like that, is the violence that's kind of dangerous because it glamorizes it. If you show violence for what it really is and you show the effect of what it does in the home, then it stops glamorizing it and it becomes real. Yeah, I'm, I'm now, having seen the films that I've seen, I'm probably more interested in the row he has when he goes home to the wife than the row he was having before he goes home, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know? completely. Yeah. And, and in your character, Billy, like, do you think he's a good guy? Did you identify with him? In um, I mean, yeah, you, you kind of, you have to, in, in any character that you play, you have to kind of, you have to find your own truth and your own connection with it, you know. Um, with him, I mean, yeah, you know, I guess, I guess to an extent, you know, I mean, it's completely different, but I have my acting world and acting friends and, you know, the business. And then I have my friends that I've grown up with, um, you know, a, a lot of whom are sort of in and out of prison and, and all the rest of it. So, you know, they're two very different worlds and they very rarely collide when they have when they have collided, if I brought friends to a premiere or something, it doesn't always go entirely <laughs> well. Um, but yeah, so I can, t I can totally relate to the two different worlds. I can, I think most boys can relate to even on a level of uh, when you were a kid and your mum was saying, you know, have you been in, been in any trouble? No mum, no mum, no mum, you know, so there, there's, there's that that everyone can relate to. Um, so yeah, there were similarities, but I think I would like to think that I would um, know when to quit while I was ahead, whereas I don't think Billy necessarily did. Or maybe he was just in too deep that he didn't have the choice to quit at that point, but I would certainly not put loved ones in any real danger. No. Okay. And uh, Martin, you're, you're obviously a Londoner. Um, do, you, do you feel that... Um, sort of, you are telling the story of Londoners here, do you think that this is sort of a fable to kind of, or, or is it like a love letter to, to the city? That it's not a love letter, no. It's, uh, I think what it does is, uh, obviously I've grown up in London, so that's part of my, my whole being. And so that imprint goes straight onto the film. You know, uh, it, it was quite funny on the set. You know, I grew up as a Gooner, an Arsenal fan, you know, being brought up in Islington, and Leo's a Tottenham fan. <laughs> so uh, uh, it was a little bit of a clash there, but it was all good fun. But uh, no, I think, uh, I think, I know what you're saying about is there an imprint of London on the film? Yeah, of course there is, because that's who I am, and yeah. that's who Leo is, yeah. uh, and it's bound to be. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, guys. And thank you uh, very I love the film, I thought it was really good. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah, good luck with it. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.